they're here. Round of applause, please, for the Oliver Twins once again. And uh, like, uh, like a lot of you guys, uh, I grew up with Dizzy. Uh, I, I knew more about Dizzy than I did about Mario for a very long time. Spectrum, Zamstrad, all those things. Uh, uh, so they are very dear to my heart. And well, you put a tweet on the internet a little while ago. Yeah, family kids there. Here you are. You're the <laughs> <tweeting>. <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> so I'm sure everybody in the room is wondering what you're up to. So. Explain. Well, we, 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 we tell people that we don't. We tell people sometime in the future, and this is the future right now. It's four o'clock. We are. We've just gone past that day. Uh, <laughs> four o'clock um, Saturday. So yes, it is. So uh, let's reveal uh, what what it is. Well, you wrote the PowerPoint. So I don't even know the slides. So, <laughs> so it all begins. <laughs> At the start, I'll talk a series of playback from this year, and then we'll need any instruction. decided I'd do a couple of tweets that I'm actually looking for something because, well, I'm down with the kids these days, why not? So what was I actually looking for? Well, that's what I found. It is a nice little disc. It was quite small to find, to be fair. Um, Wonderland Dizzy, and it says complete on it. Complete source. That's quite nice. I was actually hoping to find a cartridge and hopefully find a ROM, but that's the second best. The problem is, that when you've got the source of a game that was written back in 93, um, you've got to compile it. And actually, we were using PDS and 8086 computers and stuff. And it's like, well, how on earth do you actually sort of load the disk for a start? Will the disk load? Well, it's been up there for what? Over 20 years? It's been just so um, 20, yeah, 22 years. So it's like, well, can you even load a disk? So yeah. we went to our IT guys and said, hey, guys, look, we found a disk. Can you read that? So, so they actually managed to get the data off, which was really, really good. Um, so they loaded. But then you have to recompile it. So you've got the source, code, graphics, um, and everything, the audio. Um, but we didn't have the hardware, we didn't have the compiler, we didn't have anything. Um, so we decided to contact 
These guys. Some people who know a bit about <laughs> this old kit. So Andrew Joseph, who and also the, the Yoke Folk. The, the Yoke Folk um, website, um, and there's lots of people who have been writing Dizzy Games over the years uh, and following us, and, uh, and we thought this would be of interest. So, so we asked Andrew, um, okay, we've got this disc, we can't work out how to recompile it, we don't know anything about this, we asked these guys to, and basically Andrew said, I know somebody who might be able to do that for you. And that's the gentleman well, Lucas. Lucas, who's flown over here from Poland, because with the internet, we don't know where people live when their fans are busy. <laughs> <laughs> so he lives in Poland. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, we have a lot of Russians who are fans of Dizzy as well. I do know that for a fact. Um, in the 80s, we did know that we sold an awful lot of Dizzy games to Spain. I don't know why it's probably in Spain. But recently, we know that there's an awful lot of Russian Dizzy games, which is kind of curious. But anyway, yeah. Lucas... Uh, was a Polish fan. Right. So, so you contacted Andrew, obviously Andrew runs the website. Yep. He says, I can't really do with your 22 year old disc, but I know a man who can. And that's right. Lucas. So, well, the big question is, what have you done with that? That's What's your what next everybody's slide? wondering. I compiled it. You got it right. <laughs> 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 oh, well done. I wrote the game into a set of functions, and then we have a we have made it into um, another compiler that can be used in other days. Right. So, we discovered, and we didn't know, that the background was based on Magic Man. There were big chunks of Magic Man background in there, but actually it had been completely recoded we had to take it because obviously Magic Man was in, um, in Z80. We had to take this to 6502, so we'd completely recoded it. We completed done all the graphics afresh because this was the Nintendo format. Um, and we'd also taken the opportunity to um, change all the puzzles um, and therefore we renamed it to um, Wonderland Dizzy. So um, that is the new game, obviously, Wonderland Dizzy. So, uh, and, 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 it was running, and it was running on the Nintendo. We managed to get it running on the Nintendo, which was just awesome. And it's really weird, kind of playing your own game and going, well, I don't know what this is going to be about. <laughs> 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 I don't know where this is going. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, we did actually sort of play the game after Lucas has got it running, and it was the weirdest thing, because it's like, well, there's puzzles in here. And as you kind of solve the puzzle, go, I remember programming that. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know what it was when I started. Yeah. Um, it was something, well, of, the first thing we saw the video from you at uh, Blackpool, you were sort of flicking through these old maps and like discovering Wonderland as you, you didn't seem to be entirely sure what it yeah, was. Exactly. I mean, that was literally on stage, it had been videoed in, in, yeah. on YouTube, of us like going, What's Wonderland, that? that rings a bell. <laughs> Slightly. Yeah, it's but not like, very. Yeah, it's like, uh, Vaguely rings a bell. 22 years ago, yeah. we wrote a game, never got published. It went in the roof. So, so but the interesting thing was that um, we'd been sent, um, Andrew and Lucas sent us the bombs, we started playing on an emulator, thinking, yeah, it's quite interesting, that's quite, quite a bit of fun. Um, but whilst um, Lucas was actually sort of uh, just fixing up and debugging a few little bits and pieces, because it said completely, it wasn't quite complete. Yeah, before. thanks for picking up a few bugs. Is that right? It wasn't seriously. You had to finish. He found a few, there were a few tiny bugs. Yes. <laughs> um, he also, he did actually, I mean, I was well surprised when he said that he could actually fix some bugs. Well, really? He then said, could he add Polish? Um, because that's his native language. We're like, seriously, just add Polish? <laughs> like, it sounds quite an undertaking, but if you think you can. I mean, all our games, we, we were very good at putting, um, structuring all the text. Mm -hmm. All the text was into a separate file and all sort of indexed properly. Mm -hmm. Because all our games, we did naturally do lots of different languages. Yeah. And, yeah, localization. But um, we'd never done the Polish version, so mm -hmm. I mean, you want to put Polish in. And I really pushed my luck, because I said, wait a minute, if you can put Polish in, <laughs> <laughs> what about putting French and German and Spanish and uh, if, there's still some memory, if there's still some memory there, perhaps Portuguese. There's a lot of fans of Disney in Portugal, so so um, you managed to squeeze them all in, yeah. which is still quite staggering. I don't know how many bites were left in the cup by the time you finished. Actually, one of the things. About three thousand bites left. Three hundred. We, I have to say, in the early days, one more sentence and we were done. Yeah. <laughs> in 
the early days, a game would be finished when the memory was full. Yeah. That is a problem of developing games nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. They're never asking. Yeah. <laughs> keep on adding features, keep on adding graphics, keep on adding, keep on. Yeah. Anyone who works for us knows that now. Yeah. Um, so, so, so we realised we kind of had ourselves kind of a finished, new, busy game on our hands. And we thought, wow, well, this is quite exciting, but what to do with it? Yeah. Whilst we were thinking what to do with it, and whilst uh, Lucas was kind of fixing up a few bugs and put the languages in that we'd organised for him, <laughs> Andrew hadn't been idle either. What had you done? I uh, managed to get the work, well, at the minute, a prototype working copy of one language working on an emulator. In a? In a browser. In a browser! Wow. HTML. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, no, I can believe it, these are Flash um, installed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flash install. Okay. So he'd actually managed. So, so I just get this email one day, um, or well, link, not link, just saying, oh, click this. So I click the link, and the game just fired up in my browser, and it just completely played. <coughs> yeah, that's pretty this cool. This is not that brilliant. It's like, we've got to release this. We've got to find a way of releasing this to the world. So that's, that's when we decided we're going to release this to the world. Um, basically let Codemasters know that we were doing this so they didn't suddenly jump on us and go, wait a minute, what are you doing? Um, and we, we thought, well, we need to somehow make a big announcement because every week now just play this game. Um, we need to sort of announce this and get this news out there. And Chris has talked to us about this book as well. Maybe we combine the two. And maybe these guys over at the, the, the Computing Center for Computing History, which is an awesome place, which we all agree because you just have a look around, Maybe we, have, we basically hold a big party there, yeah. and we basically, we announce the book, we announce a new Dizzy game, yeah. and everybody can look around. And so we, so we set this up, we put out the thing, and we're very surprised, and it was a surprise, surprise to, us, to us, that Daisy's joined. <laughs> we didn't actually remember this, but on the front screen it says, do you want to play as Daisy? It's like, yeah, okay. Or tag team. Oh, look. You can play as Dizzy and, and Daisy. And there's even a tag team version in there as well. We'd completely forgotten all this, and yeah. it works. So it's pretty work together. Yes, well, kind of. You play one, and then when that one loses the life, it tags to the other one, and then that one plays. We and the Cheshire you. Cat has to take the inventory from one to the other to stop having a problem seeing the other The Cheshire Cat. I remember programming the Cheshire Cat. The Cheshire Cat fades in and fades out. It's really good. Good. So, right. so, well, you've told us that a thing now. When can we... Oh, well, okay, uh, sorry, the next slide was this and I will tell you when you can get it. Uh, That's the thing I want to know. Yeah, yeah, all right. So, um, well, knowing that we were going to have this sort of um, big party, big release and everything, we asked a couple of guys at the office, could they do some up-to-date artwork? Because we've got scribble drawings and stuff, but because this was never a finished box game... Um, we finished the game, but the art for the box has always been never been done. And Codemasters never created the box art. So, 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 we know. so we just thought it would be really, really nice to actually get some new artwork. So we, we knew some very good artists. <laughs> <laughs> um, so at Radium Worlds, um, so we had Luke Priest um, do us a lovely logo. Um, with the Cheshire Cat in there. I did insist on the Cheshire Cat's face being there. Um, and Nick Miles doing um, an illustration um, for Wonderland Dizzy, um, which we can sort of now... Ooh, actually, I, I did have a couple of props. This was the map that you discovered on the day. I put it in plastic now because that way when I hand it around it kind of won't, won't uh, deteriorate too badly. Um, but um, we could have basically start to use uh, the artwork for all sorts of things. Um, so in fact we said there will be some gifts this afternoon for everybody that attends. So we have some gifts for you with the, with the artwork from Wonderland Dizzy. And what you wanted to know was... Watch out for spoilers! Oh yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. oh, sorry. Here's <laughs> <laughs> what the game actually And maybe a few spoilers. <laughs> so we've had the languages. A new Dizzy game, written by us.
Ah, <laughs> You could play it about 10 minutes ago, but you were sitting here talking to us. All right. It's uh, available now just to everybody, just through a browser at wonderlanddizzy.com. And that and how much to... That's it. Play. That's it. Free. Go play it. It didn't cost anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, actually, we can do even better than that. We've actually decided to organise a competition around it. Um, because Lucas seemed to be a nice chap. And he was able to add some features, and he had a few thousand bikes left <laughs> at that point. We, we basically sort of said to him while we were playing it, we said, this is actually quite hard. Um, okay, we're Games used to be really hard in the old days, so it is quite hard. So yeah. we sort of said, could you add um, an infinite life version? Because this thing where it keeps taking lives off you is a real pain. Uh, it is in real life as well. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um, could you add an infinite life version? So uh, Lucas very kindly added a classic mode, three lives, um, or a fun mode, where basically it always stays at three lives, which is very good, and, and it's much better to play, and much easier to play, because we'd like people to beat our games. I mean, um, I think in the old days, one of the mistakes we made was we actually made games so hard that very few people actually beat them, which is a shame. We'd like people to finish them. My daughter's here. You haven't finished many Harry Potter games, because they were all too big, weren't they? Um, so it's better that people have a lot of hours of enjoyment and then finish it, and then they can move on to the next, and there's closure. Um, so, so he put the, um, the fun mode in, which was excellent, and then I was saying, that's interesting, but, but now everybody's going to play it in the fun mode, and they're not going to actually play it the way it was meant to be played. Yeah. Maybe we can motivate people to play it the way it was meant to be played by actually setting up a competition. So I asked um, Lucas if he could You asked Lucas to do a lot of I know. <laughs> I know. He's used to doing this. It's his daytime job, just asking him to do code features. <laughs> That's what he does. <laughs> so I was like, could you just put a code up at the end of the screen to sort of verify they've done it for real, in the real mode? Right. Um, so there's a little ID code that if you play it in the classic mode, uh, at the end, when you beat it, it puts a little message up which, because we're living in the age of social media, we're then saying people can photograph, put on Twitter or Facebook with hash I beat Dizzy. We will then search. We'll verify the code. Verify it's the real. code is real. And then, and then basically enter your prize. And we've got some lovely prize goodies. Um, I thought they were on my PowerPoint slide, what the prize goodies are, but I actually have them here. Is it the next so, slide? So, no. for the first, first um, no. I'll go to the next slide. That is wonderlanddizzy.com. Which is, ah, live. which is live right now. You can test it on your smartphones. Uh, so we've got some nice signed cocks. Oh, wow. For the first person who beats them. And you have the um, other cocks? We have um, some mouse pads, which you will all get because you attended today. So um, everyone gets their mouse pads. So don't leave without. We have some mugs, which no. unfortunately they've all gone outside. I can't tell you now. Oh. We have some mugs, uh, mugs, mugs and you. we have some badges and bits and bobs. Um, so we're basically saying the first person who beats it and proves that they've beaten it will get the clock and the goodie bag. The next ten people will get the goodie bags and one at random will get a clock as well. We will then, um, over the next month, do um, another ten at random and another clock. Um, just for a moment that you play. So, it's fun. And um, thank you for all enjoying and loving Dizzy Games, because we loved it too, and it's amazing that we found one we never actually got to publish. Well, on behalf of everyone here, thank you. I knew there was a picture of all the goodies. Yeah. Yeah. There's the picture of I knew there was a picture. So now you can play at wonderlanddizzy.com. Yeah. Which um, is your I imagine. Uh, before we do that, though, uh, there's a, well, we've got some questions. questions. Yes. yes. Does anybody have anything they'd like to ask? I mean, that's an incredible story. You just told us a lot of things very quickly. Right. I'm Andy from RGDS Podcast. I just want to find out how do you feel about you know people still playing your games to this day? You know, like my kids play yes. your games. Like I put it on for them, and they'll be like, "What's this?" And it's all new to them, and they're excited. About I think it. a lot of people now. Now this is available through a browser, thanks to these guys. Yeah. An awful lot of people are actually going to be able to see what it was like back in those days to play these kind of games.
games. Uh, and the reminiscing. I mean, it was fun. That's uh, playing it ourselves. Yeah. Reminiscing. We used to write good games. <laughs> no, it was a, a fun experience, and it's a slightly weird one because you are actually trying to solve the puzzle while you're going, and then you kind of solve the puzzle, the, and then as you were doing, you go, "Oh, I do remember that." Actually. So, um, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a wonderful that modern technology and these guys have actually kind of given us the opportunity to actually be able to give this to the world. I mean, the much better it's out there on the net than it's in my office. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, just like when we were saying in the earlier talk that um, people just kept on playing dizzy like and over time and we it's always the game that will will I don't say haunt us follow us. <laughs> everyone, in a good way. Everyone in great class who realise who we are it's it's always dizzy. They're always about dizzy. We want a lot of simulator games, but it's always dizzy that people love and it's the the fond yeah, characters quite a few and, games since. Yeah, <laughs> it's the fond characters and the stories and those that those emit a lot of emotion, I think, um, and people <laughs> fondly remember the little stories. Even though our little speech bubbles were always very small, people could read so much more into it. I think yeah. when people were re reading books, your imagination goes beyond just the text. And I think people's imagination, because we have such rudimentary 8-bit computers, so remember, guys, this is an 8-bit game with 8-bit graphics, and there's no more than four colours in every character. <laughs> uh, all those sort of tricks. Yeah, tell you how you coded it. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I know too. Um, but they emitted enough story that people filled in the rest of it and they have fond memories. And I hope we don't shatter their memories by playing them. No. And, no. and seeing it and going, oh, they were a bit uh, flat, weren't they? No, no. I think, <laughs> I think people will have fond memories and we hope we can play for that. But as, as you, like, you, I mean, you say it was better to be out there than you were off, but you didn't have to do it like this. You could have made it all give you loads of money. No. It's not about like that. It's not about like that. No, all games are free nowadays. Don't you know that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We're fine. Don't worry about us. Does anybody have any other questions they'd like to ask? Yes, you know, sir. You thought about putting it on a real NES cartridge? Oh, uh, yes. It's funny, you should mention it. Where is it? <laughs> you mean like that? Wow. Wow. I think you'll find it's in one of the Kickstarter products. And one of the Kickstarter tier rewards, which Chris couldn't talk about earlier. Yes. Of, the book. of course, the book. So in the book, or whatever, if you pledge uh, amounts of money, right we haven't worked out, but he couldn't tell you earlier when he was talking about the book that there will be interest. There is a tier notes. reward for, for this. real NES cartridges. That's a real NES cartridge for the game. That particular one isn't, but we do have. But you're going to make. We will make. We will make. We have got it working. We will make them. There will be a tier reward for working boxed. If you have NES an old cartridge. NES, and I have to say. Right, you might have an old NES, but you have to have an old TV as well. Try and plug in a PAL and um, a PAL console into an ATT TV because you can't. Um, we have a little bit of a game on that. Uh, the game is running on two yeah. You've got it running. Just to prove that it is running. Uh, oh, so you have been getting out right, there. The real cartridge there. Well, there's a mirror drive cartridge which is in these two. Right, so there we go. So it is worth running the over there. Yeah. So on old TV. So if you well. want to play that unreleased busy NES game, you can play it on a NES there. It's oh, easier on uh, di um, wonderlanddizzy.com. Wonderland <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> really cool. Yeah. But that's the real thing over yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> Has that been running all day? No. Oh. He's just... <laughs> 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 I'm the <a> story, mate. Who's <laughs> <laughs> going, what's this new game? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't remember this one. Uh, any other questions? I promise you, I lost and I this Polish guy to have a speak to him afterwards, but he's very, very amenable. Yeah. You go shake the feet, though, because it sounds like he's made you do a lot. Yeah, I'm his agent.